Welcome back to our APM PFQ series. In this video we are going to be looking at the project environment. So it's important to understand the need for change within an organization. In this video we're looking at those external factors, the things that happen in the real world that impact on our organization, that our organization either chooses to or must respond to and those responses are often through the delivery or creation of various projects. Now we'll get on to programs and portfolios in the next video but in this video that term projects is going to encompass all of those. So let's say for an example within your industry a piece of legislation that is key to activities you undertake is changed, it's updated either through a change of government or whatever it may be. That has a significant and uh, impactful effect on your organization and what you do. Your organization will need to respond to that and change something. And it could be you need to change the materials you're using, the process you're following, or indeed an entire branch of your organization may need to cease trading. But to manage that change, we need to decide what our response is going to be to that environmental factor. Once we know what our response is that we would like, we can then put together a project in order to make that change and deliver our benefits for our organisation. Those benefits that we're after might be about being compliant with the new legislation. It could be taking advantage, uh, gaining more market share, increasing profits, or a combination of all of those things and many, many other factors. Now, what we have to bear in mind is every time we change our organization, there's a feedback of influence to our wider environment. We change our organization that infects the environment for the people around us our customers our competitors our suppliers etc so every time one organization changes it potentially changes every organization so it's important to understand what organizations around us are doing so that we can stay on top of our game so when we're talking about these external factors, these environmental factors, what we're actually talking about is six different areas. And these are the political, economic, sociological, legal, technological and environmental. All of these together give us a tool called PESL, which is just the initials from those things. And everything we cover in PESL has the potential to help or hinder our project and because of that it's really important to understand what those factors are. So here is PESL written out in its standard order although in truth it doesn't matter what order you look at these. So let's look at each in turn and look at some examples of what might come under those. So for political this is to do with any current and potential influences from political entities, including whether your projects are publicly funded, international relations, visa requirements, trade embargoes, upcoming elections, or indeed elections that have just happened, uh, managing uh, management restructure within your own organization, and disagreements amongst your own senior management team. If you can imagine you're trying to run a project which has a lot of backing from some senior management, but a lot of negative feeling from other senior managers, you could find that's quite a difficult position mm -hmm. when you need to try and allocate resources, uh, get buy-in and get support. And indeed, changes to international relations where you can no longer get certain goods and services from abroad is going to impact your ability to do that. Trade embargoes put in place. You can no longer order from this company that you usually get your stuff from. When we look at economic, we're talking about, again, local, national and the world economic situation. So the willingness of people to invest, including buying your product, as well as investing in your company. Interest rates that may affect any loans that you have. The willingness to lend, just because you can afford the interest rates, doesn't mean your banks or your 
uh, investors are actually going to lend you that money various taxes and tax rates and changes to those and if you're dealing internationally exchange rates so we must also potentially consider if we're selling something direct to customers their ability to pay for our product there's no point in having a brilliant new branch in your company to sell a new gadget if nobody has the economic power to actually invest and buy your product so we need to be very aware of that before we start going into research and development for it when we look at the sociological side of things this is about the needs and wants of society so society's drive for change uh, it's not about whether you agree with the change but generally society does change uh, there's massive markers in our history such as women's right to vote and things like that that caused big social changes uh, positive ones but they did change the way that industry operated the way that we recruited staff etc we need to consider social acceptance not just of our products and services but also the way that we operate cultural differences holidays and celebrations if you are putting on an event or a launch uh, and it happens to coincide with something like ramadan you need to be aware of that because it may affect the way that you do those activities such as let's invite all of our clients in the middle of ramadan and have a nice big feast you could come into problems it's not saying that you can't do your project make that change but you need to be very aware of how that's going to impact your audience and your stakeholders we also need to think about trends we're not talking necessarily about haircuts and shoes uh, but society does go in trends it has its own idea of what is currently cool and in and acceptable and we need to be aware of that especially if we're producing products to be sold to the end user the customer the general public and we need to be aware of the move towards technology are people going to buy your product if it's only in paper form are they going to want digital forms are they going to want to be able to access that are they going to want to be able to access it in more than one way next we can look at technology which is a bane for many companies and here with considering all of the new and emerging technologies that may help or hinder our ability to make the change or the way that we do that change such as new features appearing in existing software automation processing speed of data and information the availability of new materials 3d printing artificial intelligence and cyber security all of these need to be taken into consideration is somebody out there doing it bigger better faster and cheaper than you you may not want to implement this new change without considering what is available already and how you may be outcompeted by somebody else the next of these is legal again local national and international regulations is what you're doing currently compliant with existing legislation is any change you make also going to ensure that you remain compliant with existing legislation a good example of this is when gdpr came into force many companies had to run specific projects purely around gdpr to ensure they remained compliant and the only benefit of those projects was being able to remain compliant there wasn't necessarily any profit in that for them we need to be aware of changes in the law ones that have happened and ones that are about to happen that are on the horizon if you consider changes to building regulations and the way that you may or may not construct certain things insulating homes uh, electrical codes and things like that you don't want to have to undo your good work potentially demolishing buildings to rebuild them so that they are then compliant with those changes what about certification do we need to have certification such as gas safe certificates 
or do we want certification such as ISO accreditation? What about human rights? How may that be impacted or affect our ability to deliver the project? Consumer law needs to be considered. Are we aware of our carbon footprint? How will this project affect our carbon footprint? And are we meeting various emission standards and legalities? Now none of these are to say that you shouldn't do your project. It's about being aware of what those things are so that you can incorporate them or avoid the pitfalls. Our last one on here is about the environment. Again, local, national and international environment. What about waste disposal? Are you going to generate waste? How are you going to dispose of that? And is that going to be in a legal or socially responsible way? Again, emissions appears on here. You may be within your legal emission limits, but what about your impact on the environment? Because some of these items will bleed over multiple categories. Yes, you may be legal compliant, but is it socially acceptable for you to be undertaking that activity? What about light and noise pollution? Again, you may be within the legal limits, but that doesn't mean necessarily that that's a good level to be compliant with. Human rights is on here again. Packaging materials, transportation. So it's important to consider all of these areas how they may help or hinder your project and indeed how some of these items will overlap different areas on here. So while we're doing our pestle what we need to do is stop and think. What items are from our political, our economic, social, technological, legal and environment, what items will help us with the project? They will enable us to deliver a better project in a better way. What things might hinder our project? That is, either prevent us from doing certain things or make it harder or more expensive to achieve. What parts of our project or the change that we're doing will divide opinion, either within our own organisation or within our customer base, within our suppliers or with our wider environment, our general public. Again, that doesn't mean you can't go ahead and do it, but be aware of that. If you are going to upset your customer base, you might find that the cost of the project is too high and not worth doing. And finally, what other opportunities may exist? When you look at that environment, it could be that you can extend your current project thinking to incorporate other ideas and make additional improvements. Actually, by doing this, we can also improve our uh, customer reputation or we can improve our carbon footprint. There's other ways we can market ourselves. That brings us to the end of this video. It's quite a short one, this one, and it's really just centered around that pestle, but it starts to get us thinking about what we want to change and why and how that's going to fit in with the bigger picture. A major failing of projects is not considering those things right up front before we start planning and jumping in. In our next video, we're going to be looking at the relationship between projects, programs and portfolios and how they are managed differently as well as how they are managed the same. Thank you for your time. We'll see you in the next one.